Sup guys, Alex from Nothing Bucks TV here, and I have a very different question for you. What platform do you prefer? Do you prefer iPhone? Android? Maybe even Windows Phone? That's a wrong answer. I ask you guys this because I was a fickle boy who went from iPhone to Android for 5 years, and then back to iPhone. And not only that, it's the perfect time to ask because iPhone 11 Pro Max Turbo Edition featuring Dante is on its way, as well as Android 10 and iOS 13.1. Without a further ado, welcome to the very first tech box. Instead of doing the usual fare of giving you a drawn out list of pros and cons, I think it's better to tell you my story. Like most of you my age, you didn't start off with a smartphone, you started off with a dumb phone. And in fact, for me, dumb phones were so simple that I didn't really want a smartphone at first. My first one was the LG Envy and everything was great in terms of quality, but then I moved on to the Envy 3 and that's where problems started arising. That phone started to shut off by itself by putting pressure on the back and it was losing keyboard buttons one by one. And so when it was finally time to upgrade, that's when some of my family made the jump to the almighty iPhone 4, including me. No longer did I need to have a secondary MP3 player or iPod to carry my music around. It was mind-blowing to me since at the time I cared more about music than phones. So it was like my new MP3 player could do phone things rather than the other way around. <coughs> However, when I upgraded to the iPhone 5, that's when I started running into some problems. Bizarre issues with a phone that no one else knew I had. Every time I wanted to sync my phone's music with iTunes, it would require a factory reset and a re-download of all my music, no matter if I was adding just a song or hundreds of songs. I know it wasn't the phone either because I got a replacement under warranty and it did the same thing. So when it was finally time to upgrade, I called Tim Cook a big nerd and got myself an HTC One M8. And that phone blew my mind all over again. Things like icon packs, unlockable bootloader, custom launchers, and anything Android can offer these days. The best part? It's running Android 4.4.4 KitKat, which that just speaks to me on a fundamental level. So when I felt like it was time to move on from the 1M8, I moved on to the LG G4, in which on looking back it really wasn't the best choice. I couldn't root it easily, and eventually my model couldn't even be rooted after I installed Android 6 Marshmallow. And I couldn't tolerate that, so I bought the Moto X Pure Edition, which was very nice at first, but just like the G4, the Snapdragon 808 was more heartbreak than actual 808s and made the mate seem more great. So when it was time to get a new phone, I looked at the not so underdog anymore OnePlus and got myself a OnePlus 5. This phone reignited my love for Android and I was able to enjoy slightly more frequent software updates and being able to have root, custom kernels, and all that back. But then I was seduced by the OnePlus 60's awesome design and I thought it would enjoy it until its support cycle ended. But my opinion on Android was beginning to change and it wasn't because something was wrong with the phone. You see, I still feel like Android is the better platform, but it doesn't matter what I think is better, because my needs were changing. The longer I used the 6T, the less I began to care about its wonderful offerings. I found myself being unhappy with how much I was tinkering, because I was tinkering more than I was using it as a phone. I started to not care about how much maybe this kernel will be better, or maybe this custom ROM will give me the extra features I want. And then the moment when I stopped wanting to tinker, I asked myself, why did I even go with Android? The answer is because I truly believe that there's more reasons to stick with Android than an iPhone. And here's an even longer list on the screen for you. If you compare them by features alone, I believe Android will take the crown in just about every way. However, Apple offers some things that I started to value more and more. Four or more years of guaranteed software support, iMessage, and seamless device backups were the main things that were the final nails in the coffin for me to switch. I love Android, but I grew so tired of the wait to be on the latest Android versions behind the pixels. And not only that, after looking over that walled garden and seeing everyone getting updates at the same time together, and for much longer than Android, it was pretty frustrating. For me, I was told that I have to wait my turn for the update since mine was still in the oven for a few more months. And it's even worse for people with HTC or LG phones. They're probably like, Android 10. And you were only gonna pay me nine. Nine. You're getting Android 9. I'm getting tutorial. But you guys are getting updates. The second thing is iMessage, which has been discussed ad nauseum, but the two things that are the most important to me are being able to send SMS over Wi Fi, as well as being able to send my wife a Let's Play 8 ball after she sends me an important essay about our marriage or something. And for the third thing, Android has no real way to back up our system fully without root. I can back up my iPhone to my desktop or even over the iCloud. It required titanium backup to back up everything exactly like how it does on iPhone. So after all these months of researching and thinking it over, I sold my 60. And after some extra savings, I was able to get the 10s Max. The first thing I noticed was how much the general experience has improved since iOS 8. While it obviously lacks many features over Android, I realized that I really enjoyed how simple things were. While I don't have the ability to theme or change everything exactly how I want it, the experience feels so universal. And I have to hand it to Apple. iOS's UI still manages to feel more consistent than Google's material design. However, there are some things that Apple needs to add before I can call this a better platform though. Please, for the love of God, let us place icons anywhere on the grid so I can 
can have the dock in four icons on the first page and the rest on the second, and please more than four icons horizontally. The second is multi-window or split screen, because you've already demonstrated it's possible with iPads. So now that I have the iPhone tennis match, I was thinking of what Apple and Google's goals were in terms of design. I believe that the iPhone was like Disneyland, while Android is like Magic Mountain. iPhone's presentation is all about immersing you in an ecosystem designed to keep you in, and generally tries to seem super friendly. Generally, people will say they prefer it, because its overarching theme is about giving you the best guest experience. But the price of admission is insane. Android, on the other hand, offers you some of the best rides and features that Disneyland could never hope to compete with, but it also tends to be a bit cheaper overall. The drawback is sometimes it'll smell like vomit, so that could be like a metaphor for Google openly stealing everyone's data. So you win some, you lose some, I guess. So what's the point of this video, you're probably asking? My point is, is that if you compare iPhone and Android at face value together, your preferred platform will always win in your eyes. Instead of it being a battle of features, ask yourself what do you need in a smartphone? In the five years that I had Android, I allowed myself to be in this echo chamber of Android is better in every single way and no one can refute it. I still believe that Android is better, but iPhone can offer a lot of things that Android can't. For example, as I was writing this script, I realized that when I bought the OnePlus 5, that old iPhone 5 that I mentioned would still have gotten iOS 11 that year. And if you don't think that's the coolest thing ever, then you can go bye-bye. So let's let people enjoy what they enjoy and to vote with our wallets. Let me know what you guys think about this video. This was very different for me. And thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed.